Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today I'm going to do a real quick video. I just want to catch you up on what's going on in this Dell 710 server behind me. I've gone ahead and I've put that unit back together because uh, I, had a, I had a question in my mind as to whether something was going to work on it or not. And this question was put into my head by another user or uh, uh, actually a subscriber on my channel. And uh, so I wanted to uh, do a video and discuss it. So wh what I'm doing on these Dell servers, as you know, is I'm replacing the Perk 6i controller that's in there with an H700 in order to get some increased storage capacity and also support uh, SSD drives if I want to go to them in that unit. Um, and then the other thing I'm doing is putting a 10 gig uh, network card in there as well. So I'm, I'm starting with this unit here because this is the Windows Lab units that I do all my testing on and then I'll go ahead and upgrade the one in, in production. But, and I don't want to tell you what I'm planning on doing with the hard drives in them, but I want to be able to have smart monitoring on these drives uh, so I can keep an eye on them. A smart is not a, a winning combination for preventing hard drive failure, but it will bring things to your attention that you may not know and I like knowing the age of the drive and how many reallocated sectors. It gives you kind of an idea of when a hard drive might fail and when it's not a good idea to use it. So it's very important to me that the Dell R710s support pass-through. So one of my subscribers heard that, Enraged Bacon, and he, he, he commented, if you're just passing through the uh, to the OS, then an H200 would have been a better option as just HBA. And actually that's a bit of a misnomer that H200 is not just an HBA or a pass-through. You have to flash that with firmware from Dell in order to make that uh, pass-through. Uh, what the PERC and the H700 do in the H200 as far as I know is they create what are called, people call them a, 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 a RAID 0 drive. They're not. They're just a virtual drive that the controller passes through to the operating system. but. Keep in mind the the dri hard drives are always controlled by the controller, not by the operating system. They just pass information through to the operating system. So he he kind of got that long wrong. He says, but I still believe you can create a RAID one arrays for your OS drives, while the rest of the drives are just handled by the operating system, without making uh, individual RAID zero volumes. And he may be right, um, but what he wasn't right on is the uh, fact that the if those controllers don't pass through smart. They actually do. Uh, now, he may be referring to uh, a Linux-based operating system because everything I read on these drive controllers is that they pass smart through to a Windows uh, unit. So um, I, I don't know where Enrage Bacon was getting his information. I don't mean to call him out, but this is a give and take kind of thing. And when people make comments like that, I, I went back and I was like, damn, I thought I had... I had actually done a, a smart pass-through. I was able to read the smart stuff on these Dells with those controllers in them, namely through DriveBender, if you remember my series of videos on DriveBender. So here's what I did. So just you may, so you know that I'm talking about the right unit. This is the this is the Dell with the 5560 uh, 8-core, 16 logical processors, and 24 gig of RAM on the unit. So it's a it is the unit that's behind me currently. And if you remember my old friend uh, standby program called DriveBender, you remember how much I like this program. Uh, but DriveBender has a neat little function. If you come out here and go down, you can show the smart attributes. So you can see this is the, uh, the date and time the drive was checked, what drive it is, the volume ID, the root path. It passes through the uh, disk identifier, the serial number, and the size, and it also passes through the smart settings. Okay, and that's using a program from hdsentinel.com. So this is using the uh, Dell Perk uh, 6i controller. It does not refer to it as the Dell controller. It is actually, if I can get there, hang on just a minute. And I will tell you exactly what controller that is. So if we go under device manager and we go to storage controllers, it's Avago's Mega Raid SAS adapter. That is the Dell Perk 
six uh, perk six uh, eye controller that's in there. They refer to it as the Abajo or Abago Mega Raid. So that's Drive Bender, and then I went ahead and downloaded another program, Hard Disk Sentinel. Excellent, excellent program. It is worth every penny. Uh, I think it's twenty nine, nineteen or twenty nine bucks for the uh, for the pro version. Is yeah, the pro version is twenty nine bucks, and the regular version is nineteen. But this thing is, uh, you know, it shows you everything on the drives. So these are the Seagate SAS drives. I have two uh, serial attached storage drives in there. And then I have two serial ATA drives in there. So you can see that it is reporting the smart for all of these drives. In fact, if we go into the SAS drive, there is the, uh, here's the smart reporting. Uh, it has a funny way of uh, showing the reports here. On these SAS drives but if you go to the serial ATA drive um, you get you get some better better idea and you can even expand these out if you need to uh, so uh, here you go it does report smart not only does it report smart on uh, serial ATA drives but it supports them on the SAS drives as well even though it might be a little hard to read and understand but if you come back to the overview you can see this this drive is starting to develop a program uh, problem this SAS drive so uh, the other one is fine it's 100% health and lifetime rights 4.64 terabytes it doesn't seem like much uh, but on these drives you can see we've got uh, more than 700 days of life left in them this one more than 655 so if you're in a Windows environment according to the folks over at uh, that make HD Sentinel Pro and let me switch over to them real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, this thing will work on uh, just about any RAID controller. Um, they claim it just, you know, it, it just, uh, let me see if I can go back here. I'll find the exact. Yeah, disc tuna. Here we go. Uh, so these are all the RAID controllers this program supports from Disk Tuna. Uh, and as you can see, if we scroll down, there's the Avago, Broadcom, and you'll see the Dell Perk S100, the Dell Perk 5i, the Perk 6i, the H200, so it does support smart on there, the the 310, the H700, the 710, the uh, H730, the 6IR, and on and on and on. The high point. So if you're if you're looking for a smart monitoring utility that runs under Windows, uh, uh, HD Sentinel is one of the best out there, according to the, them tooting their own horn. And you can see it just goes on and on and on. The uh, controllers it supports, including IDE, serial ATA controllers, SCSI controllers etc so there you go um thank goodness i went and checked on that and again uh to to the to uh enraged bacon i didn't mean to throw you under the bus or anything i just wanted to in a public forum i want to make sure that we're giving out accurate information so i think what what you may have meant is under linux or under um free nas or maybe unraid it doesn't support smart correctly and there are known issues with those controllers in Linux uh, and Unix, and, and uh, so that may be where the where the misunderstanding is coming in. But I'm a Windows guy, so usually uh, you can get smart out of any Windows program uh, because the data is there. Just they just need to get it. So uh, you know, there you go. I've had several users ask me about doing some uh, reviews on some of the programs on uh, my Xpenology NAS, but. As I have explained in a previous video, I'm not comfortable using the Synology software on a device I didn't pay for. I mean, I'm kind of, you know, we're kind of, the only thing I use Xmology for is management of the hard drives. I want to get a Synology NAS in here, but the one I'm looking at is about 600 bucks to purchase, and I don't, I'm not going to plunk down $600 for it. But uh, Jerry Cremity heard my plea. And he has donated a hundred dollars uh, via PayPal. Thank you very much, Jerry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that hundred dollars into the Synology fund. 
so that uh, once uh, for any of you that want to donate to that fund five dollars ten dollars a dollar or whatever send me it send it to PayPal or go on a new patreon and tell me specifically you want to put that toward the Synology NAS fund and then once I get enough money uh, I'll probably uh, throw a couple hundred bucks of my own money in there but once I get enough money to purchase that Synology NAS we'll get it in here we'll replace that unit I'm using now and then I'll be able to then I'll feel more comfortable doing reviews of the Synology software so if that's something you guys want to see come in here earmark those donations for Synology NAS and I make sure I set the money aside specifically for that device and another shout out to Morton at my playhouse Morton I got those packages sent off to you today I hitched up my dog sled and we made it through the icy roads to get to the post office so let me give you guys an idea what it costs to send eight pounds nine ounces to Denmark it's 65 bucks via the US Postal Service their cheapest rate and then that little um, USG Gateway, the Unify, it weighed about a pound and nine ounces, something like that. That costs $35 to send to Denmark. And that doesn't include, I think, what they call a VAT tax. So when Morton gets that device there, he's going to have to pay additional import fees and taxes on that. So it's, it ain't cheap to send to Denmark. So anyway, if you're so inclined, go over and check out Morton's uh, channel. It's called My Playhouse. And Morton is currently doing some work on his... Uh, I like to call it his farmhouse, his home away from home. And uh, I just find those uh, videos very interesting. And we've been kind of collaborating on some projects here lately. So go check out his uh, YouTube channel. And uh, I think you'll be uh, think you'll be impressed. So I'm testing uh, some, that equipment out on that uh, Dell. So I thought I'd put that up on the screen while I wrapped up the video here. So you can kind of see the method of my madness here. I'm... I'm testing some drives and uh, trying to get some ideas of the read and write speeds and IOPS I'm going to be getting uh, using these drives in this configuration and then I want to monitor them over time and see how they not only perform but see how if they develop any errors with continued use uh, because you know uh, the best thing you can do to protect your data is to have backups don't depend on a RAID one or raid <laughs> raid anything don't depend on you you need multiple copies of your data and you know up to three in up to three different locations uh, to really and truly protect your data so don't think that any of these uh things that i you know expound on here on my youtube channel replace a backup the backups the best thing you can do and you know it's real easy to do a backup you know get get two or three four terabyte drives and that should be enough you know I, I don't have any more data than four terabyte to back up and then uh, either give it to a trusted friend or a relative or put it in your bank or a safety deposit box and that way if something that way you have one backup on you at all times in case something happens in your home and a drive gets damaged you have one in a protected area uh, outside of your home so God forbid your house burns down you get a copy of data and the third location is just for shits and giggles and you know in case something totally wipes you out and you want to leave something for pos posterity I guess I, I usually just use the two drive backup method one off site one on site and uh, that, that works well for me well there you go I hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always if you liked it give us a thumbs up down below leave your comments in the comments section and donate PayPal, Patreon, as we said before in the video, we're trying to, if you want to earmark that money for our Synology fund, then just put that in the message that you, uh, where you send the donation in and we'll earmark it for that purpose only. Ken, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. We're almost to 2,000 subscribers. Let's get me up to that point before the 22nd of January, which is my birthday. It would be a, a very fine birthday present indeed and don't forget we'll see you on the other side